the difference between total and annular uh, solar eclipse and why they happen. In astronomy, we learned that the distance between the Earth and the Sun and the distance between the Moon and the Earth vary. The, 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 the path is elliptical. So when the Earth is uh, going around the Sun, sometimes the Earth is far from the Sun, sometimes the Earth is close. I'm exaggerating here for purposes of showing. This is called the distance of aphelion. Aphelion is the farthest distance. The aphelion distance of the Earth is equal to um, 1.520 times 10 to the 8 kilometers. The perihelion distance is when the Earth is closest to the Sun, and interestingly that occurs in January, on or about January 3rd, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, the Earth is closest to the Sun, and July 3rd or 4th, the Earth is farthest from the Sun. So uh, the perihelion distance is 1.470 times 10 to the 8 kilometers. Same thing will happen with the moon going around the Earth. So here is the Earth. Here's the moon going around the Earth. And then I'm going to exaggerate again just to show it. The, when the Earth is uh, close, uh, when the moon is uh, far from the Earth, it's called apogee. Okay, so the distance of the moon in apogee is given by 405,000 500 kilometers and when the moon is close to us it's called perigee notice the word ap and peri perihelion close to sun aphelion far from the sun apogee g from coming from geology the word geo geography so the that's the moon is uh, far from the earth and the distance perigee is going to be 363,300 kilometers. So how is this going to affect things? Well, when we see the moon in the sky and the sun in the sky, they span a certain angular diameter. So if I take any coin uh, that I have and I look at the coin, depending on how far the coin is away from me, I can make the coin appear bigger or smaller by taking it farther. So we call that the angular diameter of something, and we can draw it like this. So let's say here's the Earth, let's say here's the Moon, and then the angular diameter looks something like this. So this is uh, theta angular diameter of the moon, okay? And then the sun is also going to have a certain angular diameter. So the sun is bigger, but it's also farther. So its angular diameter is going to be some value. So uh, for the most part, this angular diameter is going to be pretty small. So we can use the equation uh, here, the distance uh, d arc length. Uh, so we're going to use the diameter of the sun, diameter of sun, divided by the distance here from the earth to the sun. So that'll be, uh, we'll measure it, we'll, we'll measure it from the center of the earth for simplicity's sake. So, so this is going to be the diameter of the sun and this is going to be the diameter of the moon. So the angular diameter of something, the theta, has to do with the ratio of the, di uh, the distance, the diameter of the object, divided by the distance to the object. The distance from measured from, you can measure from the center of the Earth all the way to the sun, distance to sun, and then the distance from the center of the Earth all the way to the moon, distance to moon. Okay? So what's, let's calculate what is going to be the biggest angular diameter of the moon and the smallest angular diameter of the moon. Okay? Well, when the moon is far from us, right, uh, so theta moon maximum is going to occur when? 
when the moon is close to us, right? When the coin, uh, quarter or anything is close to you, it's going to look bigger. So we're going to take the diameter of the moon, divided by the distance of the moon while it's in perigee. The perigee. Okay, so theta moon maximum. So the diameter of the moon. The diameter of the moon that we're going to be using is equal to uh, 3, 4, 7, 6 kilometers. 3, 4, 7, 6 kilometers divided by the distance of perigee, 363, 300 kilometers. Kilometer, kilometer cancel. The answer comes out in radians. 0 0.00 Answer comes out 0 0.009568 radians If we want to change that to degrees we can say pi radians is 180 degrees <coughs> and then that one will give us 0.548 degrees and then if we want we can also change that to what's known as arc minutes one degree is equal to 60 arc minutes so we multiply that and we get 32.89 arc minutes is the maximum angular diameter of the moon, okay? Now let's do the minimum angular diameter. Theta moon minimum is, again, the diameter of the moon divided by the maximum distance of the moon, 405, 500, so that's going to give you 3, 4, 7, 6 divided by 405, 500. It's going to give you 0 0.008572 radians. And then again, you can go through the same thing. Divide it by pi, multiply it by 180. It gives you 0 0.491 degrees. And then multiply it by 60 arc minutes. Twenty-nine point four seven arc minutes. Okay, I'm rounding it here to do two decimal places. So you can tell there's about three arc minutes difference between the smallest diameter that the moon can appear and the biggest angular diameter that the moon can appear. Okay. <clears throat> now, do the same thing for the sun. So, theta sun um, maximum is the diameter of the sun. The diameter of the sun that we're going to use is equal to 1.392 times 10 to the 6 kilometers from one side to the other. So, of course, the sun is much, much bigger in diameter. Uh, so now divide that by the closest that the sun can be. The distance in perihelion, which uh, I erased over here, but that one was the eighth. Okay? So what do you get here? 1.392 divided by 1.47. Okay? And then uh, divided by 100, so you get 0 0.009469, and then this is radians, and again divide this by pi, multiply it by 180, 0 0.54, uh, 3 degrees, and then if you do 1 degree is 60 arc minutes, so you're going to get uh, 
five arc minutes. Now notice something interesting coming out already. The, the maximum angular diameter of the moon, which we got here um, equal to 32.89, is even sufficient to cover the complete sun, the biggest that the sun can appear. 32.89 arc minutes, 32.55 arc minutes. So we're lucky to live on a planet which has a moon big enough to cover the sun and give us a total solar eclipse, okay? 